is this seat taken? Blue's here today with his blue Miata and he says he has a hesitation sometimes uh, when he hits the throttle and at times he's had the engine light come on very briefly. So we're going to delve into that today and find out exactly why that's happening and hopefully we can pinpoint it. So let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start simple. So we'll do a quick check, make sure that all of the ignition leads are all seated properly. They all look like they are. So what I'm going to ask uh, is so we're going to fire it up right now real quick and then we're going to just check it while it's idling here see if we can replicate the problem. So you can flip the throttle right here, around the throttle body. And then we can check for any abnormalities without having to be sitting in the car. We can just do it right here. Seems pretty normal so far. Okay, so it's not doing it right now, so I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to bridge the diagnostic port right here and I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then we'll see if it's going to display any codes on the gauge cluster. So we'll turn it off. We got ourselves a regular little paper clip. Let's take that out. And what we want to do is we want to bend this in a way that we can use this as our as our jumper. So we basically want to have it as wide as that. Just like that. We've got our paper clip bent into the correct shape. And we're going to bridge the 10 right here and the ground. So that's this plug and this plug. And now that that's in there, when we turn the car on, uh, the computer knows to give us the codes if there are any. The engine light will flash because those two are bridged. There we go, and it should flash again. So it's flashing nine times, I think. So we'll wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there we are. So now we have an engine code. We know what to look for. So we'll take a brief break and then we'll look that up and we'll find out exactly what it means. We've scanned the car for codes by jumping the 10 and ground pin. So we're gonna take it out. We're going to close that up. Now, what that code told us was the there's a temperature sender at the back of the head. And it looks like that. It has a green top on it. And it is located in about this position underneath the coil pack. So to replace that, you have to take off the coil pack and everything. Then you can get access to this. And all you simply do is unscrew the old one and then screw the new one in and plug it back in. That will solve that problem for you. And then that way the ECU that's in the car will get a proper temperature reading from the new sensor. So the sensor that's in this one right now is acting up and it's sending the wrong messages to the ECU. So that's what it looks like. And that's what uh, that nine flashes of the engine light is telling us is wrong. So part number if you like. This is a Beck Arnley part, and that's the part number that you're looking for. We have decided that it's time to start replacing this thing today. 
We've, uh, we've obtained one, of course, and uh, what we'll need is a 12 millimeter socket. That's to get the two bolts that hold the coil pack on. And then this here is 19 millimeters. So that one, that's a nice deep socket so we can accommodate the plug that's on there. need to be that tight, but some people get carried away when they tighten these down. If you do tighten it too much, what you can, what sometimes happens is sometimes the edge of the coil pack here where it mounts on, sometimes that bracket breaks off, or you run the risk of stripping the uh, aluminum on the valve cover where it threads into. So, so I'll just move this out of the way now. There's sometimes a third bolt on the bottom and this one actually has it on still. Most of the time it's been removed. There's like a pivot bolt at the back, which is kind of tricky to get to. So most people take it out and they never put it back in. And that's about 12, so I'm gonna to have to take that out. It's a little tricky because you got these hoses in the way. But, uh, We've got a ratcheting, uh, a ratcheting wrench here. That'll help us to, once we get on it, it'll save us a lot of hassle. Oh, wow. It can be quite tight. That's what I just demonstrated. Yeah, it uh, took quite a while to break loose. So, let's, uh, we gotta get in there. I think we'll get back in with this, and then we'll back that thing out. Quite a long bolt. So close to being all the way out, but not quite there yet, I don't think. There we go, that's out. Okay. That's the bolt that we just took out right there. I don't think it's been out for either a really long time or ever. I was hoping we'd be able to Right 
Now this is also a good time when you do undo these to have a look down into the tubes on the coil pack here where these connect to and have a look and see how they look. These ones are actually nice and clean. They're in great shape. So we can slide this. All we'll do is we'll undo this plug here. Because that is actually the plug that goes to, I think that's where the O2 sensor. That's the lead for the O2. And then that's the plug for the coil pack itself. So we'll undo the whole thing. We'll remove the coil pack altogether. And then it'll be up out of our way. We won't be fighting with it. There we go. And underneath the coil pack, the, this actually clips on underneath. There we go. And now we can rest the coil pack over here. Don't rest it there if that's hot, just in case. But uh, ours has you know, been cooling down for quite a while, so we can safely rest it over there. Now if you take a look in the top here, I'll point to it with my wrench. That's what we're trying to replace right here. So what we need to do is this is a special, uh, it has a special clip on it that stops it from popping off. So we need to, it's like a metal spring clip. So we need to gently get the spring clip in a position where it'll release and we can pull the, uh, the plug right off. Then we can replace that. It's a little tight in there, but you can, let's get in there and we can see that clip here, what I need to do is I think I need to get at it from the other side and see what's going on. Okay. I need to try to release these little clips here. Basically we just need to push them out. Just like I'm doing right now. Just a matter of getting the stay out though. Okay, there's one. That might be what we need to... There we go, done. Okay, so now we've, we've gently pried that off. Now you see that little metal band here, it runs the length and that clips in and that way when this is plugged back in it holds it on. That way it won't come off. So you have to be careful when undoing that because if you mess up or if you lose that clip then it's not going to stay on there. The vibration will shake it loose. So, yeah, quite a bit of oil on that. Yeah, so what we're seeing in the back here is interesting to note. We've got quite a bit of oil debris, a lot of stuff going on. You've also got quite a bit of oil in the sensor itself, if you can look in there. So that thing's all full of oil. So oil's leaked into there probably over a long period of time. And, uh, and that, you know, they do wear out, but that might be one of the reasons it failed. Get on it. Oh yeah, I think we can. We need to do is just break it loose and then we're okay. That, that just move for us. Let's see if we can. Yeah, okay, there it is. So it is a 19, just like the replacement one, which is good news. So you may get some coolant pour out of there, so we're gonna be quick. Oh, maybe not. Oh, good. There we go. This is also a job that you want to do when the car is cold. <laughs> Otherwise you're going to burn yourself silly and you, it actually could cause you know, some injury if you uh, have 
hot uh, you know, hot engine, you can end up with some burns, or if the antifreeze is under pressure and it's hot, then that will uh, that will scorch you as well. So make sure to be you know be sure to let the car cool down for you know a long period of time before you do this job. And this has a copper crush washer on it, so we don't want to go crazy on it, but you want to make sure you have it, you know, tight enough that you're not going to have any leaks. I think we're there. We go done. Don't do not over tighten it because if you do, you could strip the uh, aluminum housing that it goes into. So you want to be a little bit careful of that. And then once you've got it on, let's make sure this is <laughs> this is oriented a certain way. See that that indent in the plug? There's a corresponding raised part here on this side. So what we want to do is put it on just like that. And then it will click on, and it will stay on because of that clip. So you wait for the click, double check it, and you've just replaced the uh, temperature sensor there. Now that we've got that done, we'll clean up a little bit because we always like to clean things up when we've got access to stuff. Clean the back of the valve cover a little bit. Clip this back in. That. This goes over top of the bracket for the coil pack, this little clip here, just like that. Then we'll reattach by hand to start with the 12 millimeter bolts. Make sure that they thread up nice and true, that we don't cross thread anything. And then reconnect the coil pack and then the O2 sensor wire. And then reconnect the spark plug wires. Now, the firing order on these, and this is important because you might not get it right otherwise, that's number four. One, two, three. So they are they are marked. These ones are the NGK ones. They they're just like the OE ones. They're the correct fit, the correct length. So put number three on there. Be sure to get it on properly. This is number four. Two. And number 
one. So the firing order again is four, one, two, three. Four being the shortest. There we are, nice and snug, not, not over tight. This bolt, we're gonna leave that out because most of the time it's not there anyway. You can put it back in if you want to, but if you think you're gonna have to do a valve cover gasket very soon, like we're going to on this one, better to leave that out for now until, you know, if you wanna put it in later, put it in after. But otherwise you're gonna have to fight with it and get it back out again when you take the valve cover off because when you take the valve cover off, it's nice to be able to just undo those two bolts, push the coil pack back, you can leave the coil pack where it is then, and then you can redo the valve cover gasket without having to get the pivot bolt back out. There you are, I hope you found that helpful. That's how you replace your temperature sender that sends the temperature info to the ECU and uh, that gave us that nine flash on the, uh, on the cluster from the engine light. So now that we've replaced the sensor, we've disconnected the battery to clear any codes that would be inside the computer. And now we're gonna turn it on and make sure she starts and make sure she's running properly. Perfect. Now she's cold right now, so she's idling just where she should be. And uh, let it warm up, check for leaks and it should be perfect.